before getting started, thank you all for the awesome support on the first video. I am loving sharing this project with you. Okay, okay, let's get started. This is where I left you on part one with all of the walls being framed and set. So let's pick up on setting trusses. My building is 40 feet wide, so my engineered trusses are 43 feet long, and I went with a 412 pitch. My tails came as 18 inches long, but I cut each one down to 16 and a half inches long to create an overall 18 inch overhang once the subfascia was placed on, which happens later on. Having an overhang on the eaves of the building, George and I started by making the fly rafters for the two rakes of the building, which creates an equal 18 inch overhang on all four sides. These fly rafters are built directly onto the gable end, and the gable ends are distinguishable by all of the vertical webs. The lookouts, or the 2x4 pieces that make up the overhang, were placed on 24 inch centers, then attached. Before setting the gable ends in place, T braces were made and then attached to both ends of the building to make installing these trusses easier but also safer. These T-braces are made from two 2x4s two and were positioned on the building at varying positions so that when the truss was set into place, it wouldn't interfere but still provide plenty of support. 20, 26. 26. To determine the location of these, one person could be on the ground measuring the truss and calling out the max height a brace could be set at, then I would mark and set the brace. We were pushing our luck with the remaining daylight, but we were very motivated to set the gable ends. The sky track was used to lift it up and over the T-braces. Once it cleared and was set on the top plate, we lined it up using a three pound hammer to the outside of the top plate, then attached it using very long screws called timber locks. These screws go through the bottom cord of the trusses and also through the double plate and into the stud if it's on top of the stud. Both gable end trusses are set first so that a string line can be established and give us something to set all of the intermediate peaks to, making a very straight ridge line. How we would set these intermediate trusses caused a lot of debating. Well, debating is a strong word. Let's go with brainstorming. If we wanted to skip manually setting them and use the sky track, then the only option would be to come in from the east. The boys were worried that the machine wouldn't have enough throw to make it. But honestly, it could not have worked out better. Cody would pick up on a truss from the stack and carry it over while George held onto a string which was tied onto the tail, which just kept it from swinging about too much. I would be on scaffolding at the very far end to catch the truss as it came in. The machine wasn't able to pitch the truss the entire way, but it did get it close enough that while slowly lowering the boom to relieve some of the tension on the strap, I could pull it and set it on the top plate. It was the neatest thing. I will probably say stunning quite a lot during this build, but it was a stunning sight to see a 43 foot truss flying through the air and the roof line slowly being filled in. Once the truss was roughly in its place, George would look at the string line to line it up. I would stick my end with a timber lock screw into the top plate, then also stick a temporary brace along the top. George would stick two temporary braces close to the ridge and Cody would stick the one on the far east. Then we would rinse and repeat. <laughs> and yes, Cody was having a blast with the sky track. He really got it dialed in quickly and was proud of it. Evident of his happy dance. I'm calling that a happy dance. <laughs> because of the direction and the way we were feeding the trusses and the braces on my side were able to be very long and extend out quite a ways. But the braces on the east side had to be cut in four to six foot sections so it wouldn't interfere with the next truss coming in but still stabilize the trusses that were already in place. For permanent braces, we would attach two by four cross braces on the inside of the trusses, closest to the king web. Then also one by material to connect the bottom cords of the trusses together. Before picking up the trusses, each tail had to be cut to length. To make this go faster, I used a template for each one, lining it up to make a mark instead of drawing a tape each and every time. I thought I managed to stay ahead of the guys on this, but it was obvious once the trusses were in place that I had missed four in a row. It's an easy fix though, so it almost doesn't count. And then finally the last truss was going in. Happy dance required. The first day of setting trusses was slow because it took us a second to get into a groove and figure out our system. We set 12 trusses though. However, the second day we were flying and set the remaining 25. 
Since the highest point of my structure was set into place, I performed a topping out ceremony, which is a tradition of placing an evergreen tree atop of structure as a way to pay homage to all of the trees it took to construct the building, as well as a, a way to say a little prayer for an everlasting building. I love the symbolism behind that. The next day, we moved on to immediately laying down OSB on the west side of the shop. Adding the OSB really stiffens the entire structure and made everything feel more secure. Since the east side will have a covered patio, that will need to be framed before that side can be sheathed. So it was back to framing. Unfortunately, the hard drive that I was storing all of my footage on failed and I lost everything. Thankfully, I was able to recover a lot, but the patio portion that I'm about to move to took the hardest hit. So bear with me as I try to string together an overview for you. I started by setting all of the brackets and concrete anchors that will connect the six by six post to the concrete slab, then standing up the post. This is the one place I wish I could go back and make a small change if I could. Instead of setting the post flush with the slab, I wish I would have moved it back an inch to an inch and a half so that I could later come back and trim around the bottom of these posts and cover up that bracket. Live and learn. <laughs> Next came the beams, which were incredible. I'm sorry, stunning. They were huge solid pieces of cedar that measured six feet by 12 by 20. And I had four of them. Well, two were 16 feet, but still that's impressive. And once again, the sky track was put to good use here. Two by eights were used for the rafters on this portion. First, a template was made, then used to trace all of the bird's mouth and the seat cut onto the needed two by fours. Where these rafters intersect with the roof, there is a pitch break going from a 412 of the main building to a 212 on the patio. These are placed 16 on center and I used an L bracket on the nose of each one to connect to the beam, then another on the tail to connect it to the top plate of the building. With there being an overhang on the building, a fly rafter needed to be built for each end of the patio to match it. It's very easy to make, but the only slight tricky thing to incorporate here was it also needed the pitch break. I built it on the ground, then Cody used a sky track and a makeshift deck to lift it and me into place to attach it, using a 2x4 to scab over the seam and connect the two. And now that the framing was complete on the east side, sheathing could start going down. George had to head home after setting the first beam on the patio, but Cody still helped me as well as my parents. When installing the subface, my mom would push down or pull up to get the 2x6 where I needed it. Or, if it needed to be moved a lot, then my dad would step in. Sheathing starts on the eave and works up to the ridge. The first row is very important to get set correctly since all the adjoining rows play off of it. Make sure that the seams are staggered and also a battery operated nailer is a dream. As long as you have a second battery that you can swap out on the charger. To make laying down OSB quicker, Cody would load up 10 sheets on the sky track then lift it up into place so we could pull directly from the pile. After the first row, H clips were set into place before the next row was laid down. These can be a little tricky, but I saw a good insulation tip on Instagram and put it to use. We would carry the sheet into place. With the board slightly upright, we would set it into the H clips, then just let the board drop. When the board dropped, I would tack the edges and also the bottom on every stud or truss while Cody laid out the 24 inch markings along the top. This is so I can move to the top and line the truss up to the marks before sticking it into place. For trusses that needed a good amount moved, I would hop inside of the truss and use my body weight to persuade it over. Again, rinse and repeat until getting to the top and very last row, which was cut two inches shy from the peak on both sides to create a four inch ridge vent. Since I was essentially just tacking down the boards as we were laying them, at the very end, I came back and did all of the intermediary, intermediate? All of the other nailing. <laughs> This is where the lines on the OSB really come in handy as they line up with the truss. So I could switch my gun over to bump mode and really fly through this. At this point, I was on cloud nine. It's difficult to express the exact feeling I had when standing on my completed roof, but maybe my very weird mix of happy dance moves will help express it for me. Okay, so a recap. Overall, it was two days to set the trusses, one on sheeting the west side, two to frame the patio, and two days to sheet the east side. 
It was a lot of hard work in seven days, but damn was it worth it. I know I still have a long ways to go, but I am already in love with it. My friends are calling it an arc, a stadium, a hangar, and well, it could be any of those things. <laughs> it is a woman's workshop, my shop. <laughs> so cool. Stay tuned if you wanna see more. Yes! Yes! yes. 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 Hey, what you do, buddy? Oh.